you got to surround yourself with those positive people that are going to make you the best version of you. um, And they're going to help you reach those goals. Welcome to the Spartan Endurance Series on Spartan Up Podcast with host Johnny Waite. Welcome to Spartan Up Podcast. I'm Johnny Waite, one of the hosts of the Spartan Up Podcast. And we have another special endurance episode for you. You want to talk about going big and going forever? I have three people here who took on a massive project, and we're going to get into that. But they spun a globe, and they'd all agreed that wherever their finger ended up blindfolded on this globe, they were going to put an event together and go there. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Gone Rogue High Protein Chips. Visit Amazon or GoneRogueSnacks.com and use the promo code SPARTAN25 to get 25% off. So um, I want to introduce um, Gabe, Jody, and JB. They put together a film called Running the Roof, which is featured in the Banff Fountain Film Festival, which is where I saw it, and I was blown away. So who wants to go first and tell us what actually happened, guys? How you guys put this together? I can start, Johnny. Um... Because JB. Uh, JB, exactly, yeah. Uh, first of all, thanks so much for having us here. We're really excited to be put on this podcast and to be able to speak to your community. Um, yeah, I really like this idea, you know, talking about commitment. Uh, and, you know, we spoke about this before this podcast, but it really started, you know, just after a night out when I was socializing with Gabriel. And we were in the middle of the European winter. You can probably see behind me now, it's dark, uh, super early. And we were getting to that point in, you know, sort of, you know, November time where, you know, we really wanted to get away and go and do something and escape the kind of bad weather. So, yeah, after a night out, we had this massive sort of globe, global map um, in my apartment. And I, I just spun Gabe round and, you know, we kind of said, you know, wherever your finger will land in the world, we'll just go on an adventure. We'll go and, we'll go and do a run as, as both big runners as part of our running group. And, I, you know, we, we blindfolded Gabriel, put him in front of this map, spun him round. Um, and his finger landed and, you know, ready to run on the location, it, it kind of hit and his finger landed on the Pacific Ocean. Um, <laughs> and so I kind of thought, well, you know, we, we can do many things, but walking on water may be a little bit uh, above our station at the moment. So, yeah, second time round, we spun and he landed on um, a country called Tajikistan, which, you know, realistically at that point was probably as as crazy as running um, on the Pacific Ocean. Uh, Most people have never even heard of Tajikistan, let alone could point it out on the map. Um, But, you know, we woke up the next day and we'd kind of made this bet. And, you know, we decided really that Tajikistan is worth a shot. And the more research we did and the more we kind of learned about this, you know, amazing country and amazing part of the world, um, it made that commitment, you know, all the So, So a big part of what we're talking about this month, actually, on the Spartan podcast is, is commitment and putting a date on the calendar. And you guys didn't just put a date, you put a location. And once you had that location, it became real. So, so Gabe, uh, like you said, you're out socializing, you you have this great idea, you get spun around, you hit the map, you wake up in the morning and it's like, oh, wow, what did we commit to? So (laughs) where did it go from there? So you wake up the next day and uh, did you guys, was there any doubt or had you committed to each other that this is going to happen no matter what? Well, the thing is, there's a lot of bats that happen in the world every day. And, you know, when you wake up the next morning, it's, it's not about the idea, whether it's a good or not, it's whether it's the right people behind it that are going to make it happen. And, you know, we were just both so excited about it and we knew that it was going to be challenging. First of all, because we had like no really concept of what um, running through Tashikistan would be like. Sure. And so we were just very excited. And the more research we did into it, um, the more excited we got about it. And we, we really realized that, yeah, we just had to, you know, say that this was going to happen and just go and do it. And we had to surround ourselves by the right people. So we had to surround ourselves with the right people, because if you're with the right people yeah. with that right drive, then you're going to make something happen. So a question about the right people, um, and, and I'll, I'll stick with you two for now, and then I'll bring uh, Jody in in a second, because I know that she came, came in after a little bit. But um, in terms of that, so you start telling people you're going to do this. I'm pretty sure not everyone was like, that's a great idea. You're going to crush this. No, I think, you know, that is probably the hardest part of making a commitment. I mean, look, we are, we're runners. We're, we run, you know, with a running crew called Midnight Runners. We've, we've run, you know, between us, like marathons or ultra marathons, 
Um, but, you know, we won, you know, uh, adventure level, long distance endurance runners, and we knew nothing about Tajikistan. So, you know, when you start telling people that we're going to do this bet, we're going to run across the country, and, you know, what, why not film it? People are like, sure, okay, brilliant. Of course you will. Because, you know, people are always making, like as Gabe said, always making these bets. So it was really, you know, after making that commitment to each other, it was about then really kind of selling it to people and selling it to other, you know, potential teammates that this is something that A, is, is possible, you know, B, um, we can actually do, but C, is worth it. And, you know, as the kind of person that pushed this project along, as the kind of person that was kind of staking his reputation on this, I can't tell you the relief of that feeling when we got to the the the, the, the start line, which I mean is sure. just you know, a bush in the middle of a valley in Tajikistan, and actually started running. And it was that moment when I was like, "Wow, okay, you know, this has taken a year to get here, a year of planning, a year of training, a year of you know logistics, one cancelled trip, uh, you know, a whole raft of different problems, a whole raft of personal doubt." a whole raft of sure. group doubts and getting to that position and starting running and actually you know what like as soon as we started running it was it was easy <laughs> so so i actually want to have a whole deep conversation with you um separately about the idea of um what it takes like when you plan something big that that it doesn't just happen overnight so so we'll, we'll come back to that part but in terms of going from the idea to that start line and i want to bring uh, jody in on that um, how, how long a process was it from, from decision to go? So I'll get you to answer that, uh, JB. And then, um, Jody, I want you to tell me about how you got involved. Sure. Sure. Do you want to go through the, the timeline there, JB? Yeah, or, or you, you can dive in. You're here now. So, so, so from, from what, from when those guys had their silly night out to when you guys had your, uh, lying awake the night before you started running thing and wow we're really here in Tajikistan how long was that and where in that process did you get involved sure um I think from there it was am I right in saying uh 18 months is that right yeah um and I came on board a few months after these guys had pinpointed the location on a, on a map um so it was around Christmas time eight 2018 now and um, this yep. year is a little bit of a blur um and actually sort of touching back on what you were asking a minute ago it was sort of it was a surprise call um we were all in different countries at that point um so it was a call so actually it's a, a bit like right now everything's virtual and online um and uh yeah it was a big surprise but i mean it was a huge opportunity and these guys are amazing um so again it comes back down to like the people involved I wanted to be involved not only because of what it was but how excited and passionate and dedicated these guys were and also just what type of people they are um so I said yes and then sort of going back to what you were saying about telling people I was hugely excited because I had absorbed that these guys had enthusiasm and they had sold this dream and this is just such an incredible opportunity let's go see if it can be done and the first people in my vicinity were my family. And I told my mom and it was like, a, you are absolutely not going. <laughs> <laughs> and it was sort of like a massive deflation. But my decision came of, I just won't talk about it again with her for a while. <laughs> sure, sure. And let's well, carry and, on. <laughs> and, and, and with that, you know, once, once you've committed to something, and it's funny because so many people think that big things don't happen. So they only do little things, right? Because little things are easy and you can do them whenever. Whereas a big thing, you tend to have to say, I'm going to do that on this date with these people and then make it happen. But people don't get that when you commit, I think it was uh, Goethe had a great quote, which is um, uh, simply commit and providence will, will, will move the world to make it happen. Um, but Gabe, I want to hear from you about that in terms of um, once you guys had committed, how did things start to fall into place? So after that initial commitment and getting some people on board, it was just all about like getting things moving. Um, and JB is, is someone who really helps get people like get people excited about what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and so we were all excited and we all um, really had some uh, tasks to work on, things to look into and like concepts to kind of flesh out. 
um, because we knew that we were going to run across Tajikistan, but our specific route was not yet determined. Um, so there was like a time pressure and there's, there were some calls when, you know, I think we had the flights booked already and we were still very uncertain of how things were going to go. And if I'm going to be completely honest, like until we reached the other side and we're on the plane back, we didn't know really how it was going to go. You know, it was like every step of the way was an adventure. And, you know, I think that a lot of people get scared from this, this idea of the unknown. Sure. Um, and not, not, just, not just scared, but paralyzed, right? And the fact mm-hmm. that if you don't have tickets booked and you don't have time off and you don't have these things, then it's a someday project. And the only day that nothing is going to happen is someday because that's when everything's going to happen. And therefore, it never does. But just when you said that about, um, you know, even, we even had the tickets booked and still didn't know how things were going to work. But because you had the tickets booked, because you committed to it, then you had to find ways to make it work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I- we had to we had to find ways. Um, and it was about really like bringing together the right people that were going to, you know, step up to the plate and be right for that moment. And we just kind of it was all gut feeling. So yeah, I yeah. actually had met Jody um, at uh, Love Trails Festival is a running festival that happens um, in Wales every year. Yeah. And uh, I had met her there. And um, we got in a conversation and I had called her for every time I met her afterwards, I called her the inspiration. And yeah. to this day, I still call her the inspiration. And um, Jody and I were, were talking, um, you know, before I, I, ca- I called in, so JB and I were talking before we called in Jody. And um, it's like, we, we should bring on another person. It's like, I know yeah. just the girl, like she is like tough as nails and, yeah you know, it, and is truly an inspiration. Um, and, uh, if you watch the documentary, you will see exactly that. And, you know, by bringing on those right people, that's how we got things done is like, you got to surround yourself with those positive people that are going to make you the best version of you. Um, and they're going to help you reach those goals. So uh, JB, I want to ask you a question about that. So in terms of, um, making the documentary and, and, and it becoming this bigger thing, what was it that you were hoping to accomplish? I mean, you know, when, when you spun Gabe around, it wasn't just, I need an excuse to run because you guys run anyway. But in terms of creating something this outlandish, what were you hoping to, uh, to achieve, JB? You know what, I think what we've achieved and, and I think what the filmmakers have really achieved as well, what Saucy Film have, have done with, with Running the Roof, which is the name of the documentary about, you know, our run in Tajikistan, has kind of almost taken on new meaning sitting at the back end of, of 2020 yeah you know, i think we we went into this you know with no real expectations or no ego about what we were going to achieve but with this you know with the, the kind of idea that we wanted to allow people to you know realize that what they whatever they wanted to do was kind of possible if you put yeah. your mind to it you know like i said we're not professional athletes the film crew you know have never made a documentary film before you know we've really gone into this as amateurs and i think you know, often in life, we're kind of, you know, boxed into certain things, you know, like you're an accountant, you're a nurse, you're a doctor, you know, you're a teacher. And you kind of end up on this path where you think that's just what you're going to have to do and what you need to do. You know, and I think what, what we really try to show with, with Running the Roof is that you can do whatever you want if you put your mind to it. It's not going to be easy. You know, it's not going to be uh, a walk in the park. At times, it's going to be painful. You're going to cry. You're going to you know, have sleepless nights. But, you know, when you really want to do something, just grab your people that, that you can trust and go and do it. Um, because the whole world is out there. And I think, you know what, like sitting now at the back end of 2020 and having spent the majority of this year in some form of confinement or lockdown or having sure. all our freedoms restricted as, as we all have around the world, you know, this kind of shared uh, closure of our horizons. Yep. I'm, so, I'm so glad that we that we went and did that because it's just a good reminder when that film you know released this year that there is that whole world out there, um, yep. and you know it really is ours for the taking. And the more that we go and do these kind of things, the more we build bridges between different people, and you know we 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 we, we demonstrate that our world is all interconnected. I think again how how much 2020 is has shown it. So a little bit philosophical philosophical that, but like you know I really I really mean it. Like yeah. I think. Uh, it's it's a demonstration of the world that we that we had and the world that we've kind of lost, you know, for the moment. So 
Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've always felt that sort of six months is the horizon that if I haven't done something for six months or don't have something on the horizon six months out, um, there's something wrong. You really have to have something you're excited about. And I, I think people have had to be very creative this year because, you know, a lot of stuff that people had planned and had been excited about got canceled, obviously. So we've had to create our own things. Um, we talked a little bit off camera just before this started about how uh, there is a real danger that the complacency that people are getting into with being at home and everything's on Zoom now and, you know, a lot of things are going virtual and it's getting easier to not make big plans. So, and so I'm curious about, you know, what your individual plans are going forward. So in terms of putting something on the calendar, putting something out there and throwing your hat over the wall, I love that expression that uh, once it's over there, you got to go. I'd love to hear from each of you. Um, what's something, and we'll start with uh, Jody and work our way back to JB. So we'll go Jody, Gabe, JB. Um, what's a project or an adventure that you're excited about uh, that you may have already committed to or you want to commit to now? That you're going to do within the next say two years to give yourself an, uh, enough window that uh, we know we can go outside again um well i hopefully have a it's a quite close to home one but an adventure on the near horizon hopefully the end of january um will be a, a race a rare race um that seems a bit um foreign this this year um but it, it's 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 something, it's a local race, it's a hundred mile race um, on the southwest coastal path in Cornwall in the UK um, in the middle of winter, exposed yeah. to the, exposed to the coastal everything, all yeah. of the elements. Um, and it's something that it, it's a local thing for me here. So I've always watched people do it and been in amazement and said, never, never, never can I ever do that. Like that's, that's impossible. Like how do people survive? You're running in a storm and nine eighty percent of the run is in the dark um so i committed to that and actually back before like actually yeah earlier this year where we sort of had hopes of oh this will be cleared up by then and it's looking less and less likely but still the commitment is there and getting out on the route and wrecking it and going ahead with very positive thoughts of like this is gonna happen um otherwise you go and say this is probably not gonna happen you're unprepared you don't train and then it probably will happen and you can't complete it um but yeah it's something like you're saying if it, it's commitment and stuff it's just having it there and also having again it's to do with people um so I'm being accountable so I've committed to a few people I'm not really someone often to shout about what I've got lined up but I've told a few people and going out and wrecking some of the course with them and this sort of thing so it's that commitment and also having those people around you saying no you yeah. can do this like you you are gonna do it um so yeah For that's sure. exciting I think so a, a little bit of commentary on that for anyone who uh, isn't familiar with the UK a lot of people don't think of the UK as being cold uh it is a lot further north than people realize and it is in the winter a cold miserable wet cold and so, uh, so, you know, what you're doing is a lot harder than running in, uh, in, you know, Alberta in the winter, which is very cold as well, but it's a dry cold. You, this is going to be bone soaking brutal. So good, <laughs> good on you. Uh, and, and Gabe, <laughs> how about you? What? <laughs> <laughs> What's on your horizon, Gabe? Um, so if you don't mind, I'm actually going to talk about something that, uh, I actually just recently completed. Um, uh, and sure, that was, yeah. um, I just got back from a four month uh, van trip uh, across Canada. Yeah. And the, the thing with that is like, there was, before I started, I, I was talking to JB and, and I said, you know, like, I, I'm not sure if this is the right time to do it. Um, and there was a hesitation, but I was like, everything was kind of like lining up and it's like, Hey, well, you know, maybe this is just the time to take, take that time off work uh, and kind of throw myself out there and just go for an adventure of a lifetime. And there's always that hesitation right before where you're like, Oh, is this, it, it's such a big step. It's such a big thing that I'm about to start. Um, and even if, you know, everything's there, you, you hesitate and there's yep. that moment of hesitation. But as soon as we um, got in the van and started driving, you know, everything was everything like faded away. Yep. And that once you just kind of like go, then yeah, yeah. it's amazing. And so we traveled across, um, actually it was in San Francisco uh, and drove up to BC 
and all the way across over to Newfoundland and uh, did as much trail running and as much climbing as possible. I learned to lead climb outside and so did a bunch of climbing in Squamish and um, BC, Alberta and uh, all over into the East Coast. Awesome. That's incredible. What an adventure. But, uh, and, and JB, how about you, man? Well, I, I think like everyone, I went into 2020 with so many amazing plans. I had like my first 100 miler, um, like in one go, uh, booked Ultra Monterosa, which has been canceled. And then sort of seeing every single um, race that we were kind of, I was kind of training for, you know, sort of closed down. But, um, you know, it's been a great time to kind of reflect and actually, you know, kind of put everything together. So I've just put in an expedition proposal for 2021. Um, looking to go to Papua in um, Indonesia, um, yep. actually going and uh, looking in a remote um, mountain range there for um, like a lost species. So a species that was identified to science in the 1920s and hasn't been seen since. So a little bit of a combination of yeah, natural science background and then uh, being able to kind of trace my body around a, a mountain range in the Indonesian rainforest for uh, a month looking for a tree kangaroo that hasn't been seen for a while so um, fantastic I, lo I love the breadth of your answers these, these are three <laughs> very distinct answers which is great and um one thing that I've, I've explained to people when they you know ask how how do people like you guys or myself or friends that I have how do you guys do so much stuff and I say you just say yes to something and when you say yes to something it gives you more confidence to say yes to the next thing but also you meet somebody so somewhere along your run, you met someone who is now in your friend circle who they'll come to you with another idea. And, uh, and then, then also the idea about um, when you create something and involve other people, then it really puts the leverage on you that you can't back out. And you know, just tying some of this back to, to Spartan, um, you know, we have um, a series of races, the sprint, the super, the beast, the ultra beast, um, hurricane heats, uh, all kinds of stuff. But the idea of somebody signing up for a beast, which is, you know, a half marathon distance uh, up and down mountains um doing obstacles all the way way outside their comfort zone way outside what they're currently they think capable of but when they commit to that and involve friends in it and they pick a date and they pay the registration they're going to do it they're going to find a way to do it just like when oh, yeah. you um tell people i'm going to go and find this tree kangaroo and i bought my tickets to indonesia uh you know you're going to go do that i think you know johnny i really really i can't agree more and i think you know the, the importance of things like Spartan Race and, you know, even if you're starting at the very kind of the low level or the, 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 sl the smallest distance or it's your first time doing something like this, you know, everyone that you see started by booking their first race. They started yep. by making that commitment, you know, the importance of that commitment just to go and do something. Um, yep. You know, and I think I, I can probably speak for, for Gabe and Jody here, you know, when I say that, you know, we all started by booking a 10K and then running you know, the first 10K race, and it was a half marathon, then suddenly it was a road marathon, then we did a trail, and then it started becoming into the ultra distances. And before long, you know, the whole process, you know, it, and it is a process, it's not an event, you kind of build yourself up. But in the, in the, in the way you meet people who are, who are crazy enough and, and awesome enough to kind of go on that journey with you. And I think, you know, organizations like Spartan and, and what you guys do about bringing those kind of people together, it's so important. And, you know, I, I feel like, you know, this year has also kind of taught us that, like how important those events are, you know, those kind of ceremonies of, of kind of awesomeness where everyone gets together and pushes their, their boundaries. But, you know, it makes you realize that, you know, you, you're also looking for that challenge. So, you know, if the takeaway is, yeah, book a flight to Tajikistan, go and run the Baltang Valley, we'll send you the route, go for it. But if you don't feel ready for that, go and book your first race, you know, go and book your yeah. first one. Um, and get out there and, and give it a go because it's just the stepping stone for, for, for something else. Um, perfect. Well, thanks guys. That is a perfect note to wrap up on. And we're actually going to, uh, we're going to stay together because I want to interview you guys about a whole other topic and we'll come back for a new episode with that. But for this one, I want to thank you guys very much. I encourage everyone to watch uh, Running the Roof, uh, which uh, was in the Van Fountain Film Festival and it'll be available more broadly soon. We'll put the information into the, uh, the, the show notes. Um, and also, just tell me quickly, um, I'll, I'll go to Gabe for this one. Tell me about, if people want to find out about, more about Midnight Runners, where they do that. Find Midnight Runners on Instagram or midnightrunners.com. Um, and you can also download the My Crew app and look for events in your city. So we're currently in 11 different cities around the world. Check out Midnight Runners uh, on Instagram. Perfect. Thanks, guys.
This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Gone Rogue High Protein Chips. Visit Amazon or GoneRogueSnacks.com and use the promo code SPARTAN25 to get 25% off.